Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, how does small intestine help in absorption? So we know that it is the villi and the microvilli and the, uh, these cells which play an important role in the process of absorption. But how exactly it takes place? Let us have a look at that. So now the presence of villi or microvilli increases the effective surface area which in turn increases absorption. This is exactly what I explained some time back. So if you have a wire like this and if you keep the same, I mean in that same length, if you keep the wire like this, you will be accommodate more wire in this case. Now when more wire is there, more absorption will be there. So that is the similar case here. Now in the small intestine also, on the surface they have these hair like structures so when you have so many hair like structures each of them are acting as uh, like uh, absorption for absorption so the effective surface area is increasing and that is why absorption is also increasing so let us have a close look at the structure of the I mean at the structure of the inner walls of the small intestine where we have the villi so if you see this is the, this tube like structure which you see is the small intestine so here this is how the small intestine look like, the tubular structure. So here outside you can actually see the layer of cells and these longitudinal and circular layer of cells are nothing but the muscle layer, the muscularis, you remember? Muscularis has a longitudinal layer and a circular layer of muscles. So these are the two layers of muscularis. Now even inside, inside that you have the innermost layer, here you can see the innermost layer and the hollow structure in between that is nothing but the lumen. So this hollow structure is going to be the lumen. And what are these? These structures which you see are nothing but the veins. So that is how the small intestine is also connected to the blood vessels because when you absorb something, now absorption will take place through the villi. Now if you see this folding on the inner side here you have structures like this and these structures are villi so here i have just unfolded this part and i am just trying to tell you what are villi so here you see some finger like projections right these finger like projections are villi now this villi are actually in the inner side of this tube so inside of the tube when the food is completely digested in the lumen part you have all the amino acids and uh, monosaccharides and all those stuff so what will happen is these villi will actually increase the absorption rate so they will absorb it and once it is absorbed it is passed on to these blood vessels which will then carry it throughout the body so once the absorbed nutrient goes into the blood it is the responsibility of the blood to carry it to different parts of the body so once it reaches the blood vessels the job is done right now let us look at a closure view of the villi so if you have if you closely look at the villi you will see that they are rich richly supplied with blood vessels something like this see each villi here you can actually see the villi looks somewhat like this but each of these villi actually looks somewhat like this so the villi itself has linings like this of the brush border cells as we told you the border gives the appearance of a brush that is why they are called brush border cells so they in turn have microvilli which in turn increases the surface area so basically it is something like this on the inner surface of the uh, innermost layer of epithelium they have villi like this and each of these villi in turn has microvilli like this so just imagine how much would be the absorption rate because in order to increase the surface area they not only have villi but they also have microvilli. So and here inside you can actually, actually see inside the villi you have the network of the blood vessels. So these are the network of the arteries and the veins. Right? So that is how the arteries, veins and capillaries are associated closely with the structure of the villi and this is how the absorption actually takes place. So if you have a close look at this here you can see. So now if you have a closer look at this part also where I am saying that there is microvilli. So you can actually see the presence of microvilli. This is how the microvilli would look like. So this is how absorption takes place in the small intestine. They have villi. Villi in turn have lining of microvilli which increases the effective surface area. So the absorption increases. Now the villi is closely 
associated or richly supplied with the blood vessels once they absorb the nutrients from the food they are passed on to the blood vessels and then the blood vessels carry the nutrients to different parts of the body so now to conclude our discussion on small intestine so please i hope you have understood whatever we have discussed about small intestine because this is the most important part which actively participates in digestion as well as absorption so now here are some very interesting facts about small intestine so the length of the small intestine varies from animal to animal depending upon their food habits interesting right not all the animals have uh, the length of the small intestine similar now you will be more amazed to know that the size or the length of the small intestine in case of carnivores like a lion is smaller than that those of herbivores like a deer so most of us often feel that uh, uh, eating flesh or eating uh, these kind of food meat or flesh they will be more difficult to digest when compared to plants but that is not the case digesting flesh or meat is easier than digesting plant that's because plants are rich in cellulose because plants have the additional cell wall which is made up of cellulose so when somebody eats plants they have a lot of fibers and cellulose inside their body which are extremely difficult to digest in fact some of the fibers are almost indigestible so now since the herbivores like a deer they eat grass and plant parts so they have a lot of stuff which are difficult to digest and the main organ of digestion is small intestine therefore the small intestine is made longer so that the food can spend more time in the small intestine and better digestion can actually take place whereas in case of carnivores meat or flesh is easier to digest because they do not have anything like cellulose so they don't really need a longer small intestine therefore the length of the small intestine is smaller in case of carnivores right okay another interesting thing is the small intestine is small because not because it is too long but because of its thickness so if you look at the thickness of the tube of the small intestine it is very thin when compared to the large intestine and it's because of more thickness the large intestine is called large and the small intestine is called small so the name has nothing to do with the length of the intestine so with this we end our discussion on small intestine So now we will talk about the last part of the digestive system that is the large intestine. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.